Inspiration is the process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something, especially something that's creative. Now, I understand the importance of reference, don't get me wrong. I just also understand that it's very important not to use reference, not to lean on reference too heavily. And in this video, I'm going to explain some of the reasons why and the way I feel reference should be utilized and the benefits from not using it. The, the way I see artwork is that it is an expression of understanding. Now, that's kind of a, a broad definition. I know it just about anything can be a expression of understanding. You know, you can understand that you hate your job or you can understand that <laughs> life's not fair or you can understand that love is in the air. There's many things you can understand, but I see art as an expression of understanding in a specific medium. So if you're singing a song, that song should be an express an expression of your understanding of something or you know the the lyrics should be and, and the music should be there there's many different things to understand in art you you know there you can have an emotional understanding you can have a theoretical understanding a philosophical understanding you can have an understanding of principles of your craft which I find to be very important. Or you can have an understanding, or you can have an understanding of your subject matter. This is where reference comes in handy. But at the same time, reference can be like training wheels in a way if it's not utilized properly because you, you you use training wheels in order not to fall over and that, that's kind of the equivalent of using reference in order not to make something you're embarrassed by or make something that's unrecognizable to your audience but if you can't I mean, if you, if you can't ride a bike without training wheels, do, do you really consider yourself, yourself able to ride a bike? Are you, you know, I, I, I don't think you can. I mean, sure, you can ride a bike, but if you're leaning to one side on your training wheels, you're, you're not getting the full experience, I guess is what I'm trying to say. The full experience of being an artist, of expressing yourself. If if you rely solely on reference, you're, you're missing out on a whole nother aspect of this experience. That is what I personally find is what is fun. You know, my, when, when I use reference, it's more like a, a study. I use reference in order to be able to draw that thing from memory. That way I can actually be able to, say that it's mine unequivocally if you understand what I'm saying I, I'll be able to I'll be able to take full ownership of it and no, nobody would be able to tell me different because I know this came from my head like this for example where, 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 where have you seen this at like what well, do you think I'm referencing a picture of alien or of bugs no, I just have, I just have a bunch of stuff up in my head that I'm able to utilize and not, not only, um, like things that I know what they look like because I've studied them, but also principles that I can utilize to be able to create things such as perspective or composition. Uh, 
I've tried, I've made it my, my goal to round myself off well, so that I'm able to utilize my skills in different disciplines, and being a jack-of-all-trade can kind of be a hindrance, but a lot of these skills are very transferable like shape language that you use for character design would be transferable to um, illustration, certainly, or the gesture you might learn from animating um, could translate to being a storyboard artist. You know, but very conceivable to see that that could be the case. Okay, my next point is that there's this term out there called steal like an artist. When you steal like an artist, according to what I've seen on the internet, you take different references. These are all very good examples. Or very good pieces of artwork that could be referenced. Yeah, I, I could say, well, I'm going to use this as my master pose. So my whole, my whole drawing is going to be based on this, this chick photographed by dark venues personify. I could say, well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to use this, um, this whole composition. My, my drawing's going to end up you know, looking like that, but I can't just copy the picture. I mean, I guess it would be my own if I straight up did a photography study of this. But I, I don't, I don't feel personally like it would be my own. I'd, I'd feel like I just stole from somebody. Like the the people making this level of artwork worked extremely hard to get where they're at, and a lot of a lot of people who aren't in art don't really understand that and people who are artists should so when when you steal something like a composition it, it should weigh on you 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 should understand like how, how how would i feel if you know somebody didn't just take cues from the way i compose something or the way i draw something or the the proportions i used but they they just straight up you know copied your idea and you know potentially made money off of it made more money than you were able to i'd feel terrible but the this term still like an artist i i must find it offensive in a way because it implies that you know all artists at the end of the day are just just hacks they they you know they they steal from other people you know, they they just they just it's it's a it's a mashup you know you take ready you take this ready to wear photograph and then you mix it with the proportions of this this um the psycho illustration and then you give it the colors of the sow. I mean, but there, there's something to keep in mind these days, especially these days, that eventually a artificial intelligence is going to be able to do this for you. I mean, I, what I, I was messing around with pic, with um filters on Pixar, and you know they they will transform your image into a certain style. And I think that's just algorithms with, with artificial intelligence. They're pretty much, they'll be able to crowdsource artwork from all over the place. And I, I guess mash it together. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about a lot of that, but the, the goal of an artist shouldn't be to steal other artwork in a way that isn't legally or technically considered plagiarism. 
and this is actually damaging to people coming into the field because these people only seek to genuinely express themselves. It's, it's that it's what we why we started. But anyway, that but I'm not saying that this is wholly wrong. I'm just saying it's a mindset you have to keep in check because being an artist is more than just producing a product although it, it seems like that that opinion is widespread it, but if you are in a business type setting you, you might have to do something like this your your client might want something very in a very specific style and a very specific story in a very specific way and there there's nothing wrong with making a living there's nothing wrong with I guess, legally plagiarizing within the bounds of the law. But I have to ask, what was your motivation to becoming an artist to make money? You know, then, then, all, then by all means, still like the efficient artist you must be to do so. There, there's no shame in it. Okay, but before you close me out, because I've besmirched the good name of reference, let me explain why reference is important, how I think it should be utilized and the creative and practical benefits of not using it as a crutch. Let me close this stuff out real quick. Okay, so I'll, I'll draw off this reference. Nah. I, I really don't enjoy doing it. I, I really don't. It, it just... I, I, I just don't. I, I, I don't want to copy pictures. Anyway. Anyway. Anyway, how the 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 question the the question that is often asked is how do you know how to draw something if you don't know what that looks like? And this is a great question. The answer is you obviously can't. This is why we do studies. You know, you and you might do something like that. At the same time, you could say, okay, well, I see there's a heart shape up here. So I'm going to, you know, understand that heart shape. Understand the squareness yet roundness of this head. You know, it's not just a cylinder. It has some angles to it and how, you know, the head is like kind of this, like half the mass of the body, perhaps. And that these feet, I've seen pictures of owls before, they have like, um, yeah, owls are really neat. They have like two claws in the front and two claws in the back. You know, and I, I didn't need a, a reference of a, an owl in this exact position flying this exact way to make this happen. Just for example, there, there's many things to understand in a study, many things you can learn, and all these things you can put into your arsenal, your, your arsenal of being able to draw things from imagination, which is really when you're able to express yourself, it's really when you're able to say, well, this work is mine, it's nobody else's, and you get to express your voice as an artist, and this is key, this is what you could not expressing yourself not expressing your voice could be something in the future that you regret you might say well i wish i would have made what i want to make you know even though i made a living i wish on the side i would have been able to make what i personally like instead of simply people pleasing and being as efficient as possible if i mean i if i did more studies i would be a better artist for sure but if i ignored the foundational principles of art just to practice some photo studies or analyze other people's style in order to recreate it, I don't think I would be doing it. I I I, I wouldn't have a reason to. I, I wouldn't have any passion for it. The other important use of reference is for inspiration. There's, the way I see it, there's 
two types of inspiration as for this definition and that is the process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something. So there's an inspiration that makes you want to do something. Like when you see sword art online or attack on Titan, it makes you say, Oh, well, I, I want to make art. That's just like that. Cause it's so freaking cool. Or when you, but, and then there's the other aspect of it. Oh, I watched attack on Titan and the way it made me feel that, you know, that coolness of it and the, the terror and the shock value of it. I want to recreate something like that. And both of these are fine. What's not fine, in my opinion, is being inspired by the potential. Well, it's okay, but I don't think it serves you as an artist is being inspired by the potential money you can make or how easy a certain field seems to be. And like the main thing, one of the things you learn about art is that it's not as easy as it seems. If you come in with that attitude that, oh, well, easy money. All day, easy money. It, you're, you're not going to get there. I, I don't think you'll get there. Because your motivation's in the wrong place, and it's just really naive to think that way. For my next point... Um, all right, so I'm going to explain the practical benefits of not using reference, and that is to build your visual library. You know, I, I don't know what a vulture looks like. I have no idea. Well, I've, I've seen them. I've never studied one up close. You know, when, when you draw without reference, you not only um, build on your visual library of what you've already studied, but your ability to draw things from memory that you don't even know all that well. You know, the, the ability to the ability to utilize all these important all these important artistic principles. You know, like gesture and shape language and color transitions. I feel like when you just do it from a picture, it doesn't help you in that way. And there's practical benefits to it too, like in the field. Like your your consumer isn't stupid. I mean, it might seem that the bar's been lowered and people are fine with seeing the same hashed out ideas, but they, they aren't. That's just what's available to them, it seems. Although there's many people out there doing wonderful things, I can't deny it. But the consumer has a hunger for something that is fresh and original. They 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 want that that something new. When you when you see like the awards, it, it's not going to the blockbusters. It's going to the people who who seem to contribute something to their field because of their new take on something. They, 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 they furthered, yeah, they furthered their craft. They, they inspired, they inspired something different. Something that, um, people weren't expecting. And, and that, I feel like that's what it's all about. So at the end of the day, I know I've been drawing a bunch of these dumb characters. At the end of the day, a genuine expression of understanding isn't risky. It isn't a risky way to go. You aren't dumb for wanting to wanting to draw what you want to draw because that expression is what people want to see. That I I consider it valuable. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think, and um, if you want to want my take on another subject.